run into wide open spaces, places waiting for me. Dance like the weight has been lifted, places waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit is here, let there be
And yes, God, you have pulled us out of the pit. We are no longer stained. We are no longer dirty. We are clean by the blood of Jesus tonight. We are no longer in bondage. We are no longer in chains because of the fact that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so, God, we come tonight celebrating freedom in Christ. We come tonight thanking you that you fight our battles, every single one of them, God. And we thank you, Lord, that the battle has been won by our King. So, Lord, would you continue to bless this time? Would you continue to speak to us, guide us and direct us, lead us by your spirit tonight that we'd be able to hear your voice. We thank you, God, and we pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, go and take a seat for a moment. Tonight, uh, the day before 4th of July, we want it to be a time where we pause, where we say la, where we say thank you, Jesus. We live in a country where there is freedom because there is blood, sweat, tears, lives that have been sacrificed. That's why we can freely sing these songs today, because someone gave their life for us. Tonight, as we look at the Lord, do you realize tonight the center of attention is Jesus Christ? It's not a church. It's not a team. It's Jesus. And so tonight, as we look at this, the Bible is full of stories of freedom. From the very beginning of the Bible, throughout Exodus, we just sung about that, right? The Israelites were taken out of Egypt brought to the promised land because of God's providence and God's hand. To Jesus who took the blind and allowed them to see. To Jesus who took people that were in darkness and now they were walking in light. That's who we serve. We have been freed from darkness, imprisonment, whatever that is. We were held captive, no longer there anymore. Jesus did it on the third day. The tomb was empty. We're no longer caught up by the things that used to catch us up. Tonight, we're going to take a passage in the book of Acts chapter 16. We're going to look through this. And I pray as we read through this, I pray that as you hear these words, whatever you have been trapped by, whatever you've been confined by, whatever is an obstacle, tonight you would say, I will continue to worship my king no matter what. If you're familiar with Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, there was a demon-possessed girl, and they were making money off of her. And and the girl was kind of annoying Paul. And he just looks at her and he's like, demon, get out. There was freedom. She was no longer bound by this demon. She was never, no, no longer controlled by something from the outside. What had got a hold of her heart was Jesus. And she was no longer living in darkness, no longer being imprisoned. Well, all those around didn't like it, especially those that made money off of her. And so they told everyone in the town, they threw them in the middle, and they started beating them, whipping them stripes upon their back, threw them in prison, actually a dungeon, put them in in stocks where their hands and feet are totally separated. And at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Can I get an amen on that, right? At midnight. And the prisoners were listening to them. They were praying, they were talking to God. They were singing hymns. They were praising him. What they were saying, only God knows. And I wonder, think, imagine this. You do something to help someone else and everyone gangs up on you and you get thrown in prison and whipped. And you're in this position where you can't do anything. And can I tell you, church, when you can't do anything, that's the time to look to God. They began to pray. They began to sing hymns to God, singing love songs to Jesus. 
Not complaining, but praising. Not crying, but calling out to God. Back in the day, there was a song called In Moments Like These. Anyone know that song? In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord in the chorus, real simply, singing, I love you, Lord. I think about this. Here are Paul and Silas in a difficult situation, and they're singing songs at midnight. They're worshiping in the midst of their battle. They are praising him in the storm. And what do you do when you suffer? What do you do when you are put in a place where you can't move, where you feel trapped? What do you do? Can I tell you? Paul and Silas, they sang to Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, I, I'm going to go a little bit. I don't think they, I don't think they just sung songs. I think they sang songs, right? Like there's a difference. There's a difference from singing lyrics than singing from your heart. When you got nothing left and all you got is Jesus, you give him all you got. So these men, Paul and Silas, as they are there, this is what freedom looks like, church. When you can move and all you got is what you got, that's worship. Worship leads to freedom. Don't forget that, church. I think that times, in spite of the stripes, in spite of the stalks, in spite of the dungeon, in spite of the strife, their adoration to God did not cease. Tonight, it's a worship night. And you may not be in stalks, you may not have stripes and wounds on your back, but maybe you've been wounded, maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you're in a place where you, you was self-inflicted. The, where you are at today is all you. Or maybe today you're just walking through a difficult road, the valley of the shadow of death. It matters not what you're walking through, what you're going through. What matters is you're in the presence of the king. And he is worthy of our praise. And so tonight... We sung us where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so if you want to sit and be still, do that. If you want to stand in adoration of your king, do that. If you want to kneel before the creator of the universe, do that. Worship is not an activity, it's our life. It's our lifestyle. And so this is just an outward expression of what God has done in our hearts tonight. And as we continue to worship him, let's be reminded of Paul and Silas at midnight in darkness with no one to turn but knowing who to turn to. And his name is Jesus. Father, we come with a lot of things. Some walking in the midst of darkness and some feeling trapped in relationships. And some who are just barely making it. Regardless of our situation, you're still our Savior, God. And we want to come tonight not to focus on us, but to look to you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. So God, would you lead us into this time of worship? Would you lead us to a moment where we pause and see you, Jesus, and nothing and no one else. So God, would you give us that freedom to worship you tonight? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him.
worship you. I worship you. But you are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. But you are here moving in our midst. I worship
forever. That is who you are. Holy forever. That is who you are. That is who you are. And that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, Jesus. That is who you are. You always be holy. That is who you are. Our God. You are so good. You are so merciful. It's truly incomprehensible, the love that you have for us. God, fill us. Change us. Make us more and more like you. God, we just want to worship you. So please take our praise now. You are so holy. You are so worthy. generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lord. You sound good, church. Sing it out to him. And all who gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages. Oh, cause your name is the highest. Your name your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions and all powers and positions. But your name stands above them all. And the angels cry.
in Isaiah, he realized he was a man of unclean lips. And the seraphim came and took a coal to his lips and burned off the things that were not holy. And if we could just sing that chorus again, and maybe as you're singing, he's holy, you're asking God, God, would you remove the unholiness in me? Because that's blocking me from seeing you. God, you remove the filth. Would you remove the attitude? Would you remove the stubbornness and the pride? That in his presence, he burns. He's a consuming fire, family. And we want him to consume, consume those things there. And so as we sing just that chorus again, with our voices raised, and sometimes we lift our hands, we don't know why we lift our hands. It's not culture. It's worship. As we come together as a family, what you're saying is what I have, I give to you, God. And sometimes it's, God, I can't move any further. God, carry me. And sometimes we lift our hands because we got nothing else to do but to lift it up to him. And so as we sing this chorus again, don't let it just be words. Holy. Holy is that there's no darkness in him. He's all light. He's all truth. He's all power. And so as we sing that again, if you feel led to lift up your hands to the king, asking him to remove those things that aren't of him in our life, let's do that together. And the angels cry, holy, and all creation cry. Holy, for you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. Holy to the King. Go and have a seat. As Paul and Silas were there at midnight singing songs of praise, the Bible says that the other prisoners heard. What I want to share with you tonight is when we praise, when we pray, God hears. And he answers. And sometimes he doesn't answer the way we want. The other prisoners heard that word listen is that they listen intently, attentively, intensively. They were listening to what these guys were singing. The Bible doesn't say what song they were singing. All they know, it was directed towards heaven. They were singing songs to God. Think about this. It's a prison cell. What a strange sound to hear in the midst of darkness, in the midst of oppression, to hear a song unto Jesus. I don't know about you, but in this brutal prison, there's this outpouring of praise. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. It's when someone is in the ashes and they rise above it. It's when someone is at a memorial and they still have the joy from the Lord. Some years ago, I had the privilege of seeing a mother at Long Beach Memorial. She was on her deathbed. She had cancer. And as I came there with some of the guys, they had a huge family. And I began to pray for her, began to read scriptures. And there were about 30 people in this tiny hospital room. And someone began to sing. Sing a praise song. In the midst of loss, praise was coming forth. And then someone else joined in. And someone else joined in to the point where it was so loud, there was nothing but praise. And this mother on her deathbed, kind of watching all this scene, all I saw was she lifted her hand 
unto God. That's what it means to praise. When you don't feel like it, when you don't got it, and you still acknowledge your king. See, today I can talk about I was impacted by the way that she praised our God. It wasn't boisterous. It wasn't loud. It was a hand lifted towards heaven. The thing I love about worship, the thing I love about praise, whatever you have, you give. Even if it's not a lot. Right? When the Bible says make a joyful noise, there was a lot of noise up in here, right? Noise being it's directed towards heaven. As those that heard, something happened. Next in that verse it says, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were what? Whoo! It started to move. It was an earthquake. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were? When we praise God, something happens. When we get our eyes off of our situation, God moves. See, it wasn't only the earthquake that was shaking. The chains that they were tied to, bound to, were loosened. They came off. It's a natu- supernatural phenomenon, right? It's a work of God. This shaking, this trembling. God intervened on their, be- on their behalf and he cut short their prison time. Think about that. God said, uh, you got five years, you got five minutes. Don't you love when the Lord does that? You think you've got this, and God says, I'll give you this, because I love you. The power of praise. The hand of God leads to freedom, doesn't it? Because it's not something they could have even done for themselves. God intervened, and maybe tonight you need God to intervene in a situation you're walking through. Something that's going on. The power of praise. When it's impossible, God makes it possible. And as we continue to worship, there's a lot of things that we can be attached to that hold us back. Hebrew says, let us cast aside everything that entangles us. What are you entangled with today? What's got you? What's holding you captive? When we praise... The earth shakes and the chains are loosened. That comes through praise, comes through prayer. And maybe tonight, and, and if tonight those chains are getting tighter and tighter and you feel like you can't move, we're going to pray that God removes those chains. He breaks those chains. He allows you. And so even as we just continue to worship If you feel led to stand and say, thank you, God, that my chains are gone. Thank you, God, that I'm no longer bound to this or that. That addiction, that relationship, whatever that is, I'm now free. Because you've set me free, right? What the Bible says, he who sets free is free indeed. That's a promise, folks. (laughs) Got to remind you. Though the chains came off and the prison doors opened, they had to get up. They had to walk out. And so today, maybe you're still there and God's saying, step up, step out, walk out, whatever that is. And so as we continue to worship, let's get our eyes on the Lord who breaks our chains. Amen. Thank you.
Sometimes I take that word for granted because I always thought freedom is, oh, I don't have to listen to anybody. <laughs> but the truth is, we do have to listen to the most important person. His name is Jesus. And he paid for all of our debt. He broke the chains, the bondage that I was in. He broke my addictions. He broke my anger. He, he changed my life. And I know everyone here is excited for something like that, seeking. But guess what? Jesus is also pursuing you. He's just waiting on you. And there's nothing really that matters in our life. Nothing. I'm caught up in your presence.
just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. I'll spend for 
That is it, right? You are the one thing. He is the one. In our passage in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas sing a midnight song. There's an earthquake. The chains fall off. And the prison guard, the Philippian jailer, is there. And he sees... And he looks and he can't find the prisoners. During that time, if the prisoners escape, your life for their life. And as he's ready to kill himself, Paul says, hey, don't do anything. We're still here. As he has this connection with this prison guard, the prison guard is trembling. He's scared. Not only did the prison shake, the prison guard shook. Isn't that like, a, like, a, like that for us? When things are going on shaking, we feel it, don't we? When things are falling apart, we want to fall apart. When it seems as if nothing is working right, in our life nothing is working right. Men trust in horses and chariots but we trust in the name of our God. What happens now is Paul approaches him and he brought him out and the man is scared. He's fearful. He realizes this is my life. I didn't do my job. Everything is falling apart. So I'm going to quit. I'm going to kill myself. In his mind, he thought game over, but Jesus said, your life is just beginning. This is what he said, sirs, 
what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be you and your household. Salvation leads to freedom. We are here today because we've been saved by the blood of the Lamb and we have freedom. We're no longer bound by those things. This prison guard will now be free. And if I could just talk, touch on this real quick. Sometimes we think what we do defines who we are. Who we believe defines who we are. So don't ever get that mixed up. Well, I serve here and I work here and I'm a father or I'm a student. Those are all great. But number one, you are a believer in Jesus Christ tonight. That's what matters. Today is the day of salvation for this this prison guard. Remember, he's under the authority of someone else. But now he's under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same for each of us today. And as salvation leads to freedom, you may be here tonight and you are, how should I say this, at a distance from God. You came because it's July 3rd. You came because you heard that they're your friends. You came for a variety of reasons. You know why you came? God drew you. You don't think you needed this, but he said, no, you need worship tonight. <laughs> you need prayer tonight. You need the fellowship of the saints tonight. And I just, we're going to continue to worship and close out our night, but if the Holy Spirit leads you, and maybe there's someone around you, this is the church. This is where wounded people get healed. This is where people who are caught up in addiction and bad habits, where there's freedom. As we continue to worship tonight, if you sense that you feel led to pray for the person next to you or across the way, allow the Holy Spirit to use you tonight. You may be, know, you may be knowing something going on in the brother's life across the way or the person behind you. Remember, at midnight they were praying and singing hymns. They go together. So tonight, let's be biblical. It's not midnight, it's 8.06, but <laughs> let's pray and sing hymns and songs to God. And guess who gets all the glory? Jesus. So as we continue to worship, as the Spirit leads you, if you feel led to pray for that person next to you or around you, let the Spirit of God, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Amen. Let's continue to worship him.
start to forget all of the great things you did when did I throw away faith for the impossible how did I and how did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me why do I tell myself out of seeing miracles? Oh, you are more than able. You are more than able.
Nothing is impossible for our God. Amen. Before we leave, um, I was sitting there and just listening to this song. I believe some of you are facing something impossible. And I just, as a body of Christ, um, if you're facing an impossibility right now, in your mind with that, is just raise your hand. If you're around someone raising your hand, just pl place your hand on them. If you see someone around with their hand raised, just place your hand on them right now. And we're going to pray by faith. We're going to pray by faith that impossibility becomes possible. Make sure everyone who's raising their hand, someone la laying a hand on them. Let's pray. Father God, you are more than able. We just sung it. And we just don't want to sing it. We want to live it, God. So whatever that impossibility is, whatever that situation they're facing today, whether it's opposition, whether it's disease, whether it's divorce, whether it's death, whatever they are facing today, your hand is never too short to reach out. And God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly all we could ever ask or think. And you have the power to make a road in the wilderness and streams in the desert. That's our God. And so we're not going to pray weak. We're going to pray with strength. We're going to pray with the power of the Holy Spirit, believing that whatever is lacking in our brother's and sister's life, you will provide. So God, would you take those relationships now and would you fix, would you mend? Would you take some of the bodies that are here, the physical aspect, and would you heal and would you cause recovery? And God, even just the emotional and mental things going on, God, give them clarity. Give them wisdom. And God, you said we lack wisdom to ask you, so we're asking tonight, give us wisdom, God. Give us your Holy Spirit. That we will be able to sing songs in midnight. We're able to praise our God. So Lord, we thank you for this gathering. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. We lift you up. 
We lift up the name of Jesus. God, we thank you and we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.